Hello and welcome. In this video, I explain an overview of Monte Carlo simulation and show how to create a Monte Carlo simulator in Excel step by step. So let's begin. Each day, the price of an asset such as a stock is the previous day's price times E raised to some value R. The R is the periodic rate of return, the rate that the asset increased or decreased that day. A Monte Carlo simulator generates theoretical future R values. Because the rate of return on an asset is a random number, to model the movement and determine possible future values, we must use a formula that models random movements. This was first done about a hundred years ago by a man named Louis Bachier who first applied Brownian motion, a formula used to model random movements in physics, to the movement of the price of an asset. His work was expanded on and eventually became the core of many areas in finance, including the Black-Scholes formula and some of John Hull's work. Brownian motion assumes that there are two parts to random movement. The first is an overall constant driving force called the drift. The second is a random component. Therefore, the rate that the asset changes in value each day, the R value that the E is raised to, can be broken down into two parts, an overall drift and a random stochastic component. For more on understanding the two driving forces of price, please watch my videos on the two driving forces of price in Brownian motion. To create a Monte Carlo simulator to model possible future outcomes, we need to find those two parts, the drift and the random stochastic component. Let's look at each of these. For the drift, we use the expected rate of return. In other words, we use the rate that we expect the price to change each day. The expected rate is the rate of change with the greatest odds of occurring. There are different theories of what this rate should be. However, for a standard Monte Carlo, we use a volatility eroded historical mean of the periodic daily returns. In other words, we take the historical closing prices over a period of time, such as one year or the entire life of the asset. We find the periodic daily return for each day. We find the average of the periodic daily returns. However, we erode that average return rate based on volatility. The standard rate for return erosion is one half of the variance over time. Therefore, the rate that we expect the asset to change each day meaning really simply the rate that has the greatest odds of occurring, is the average of the past periodic daily returns minus one half of the variance over time. This is known as the asset's drift. There are two other main theories for the asset's expected daily rate of change or drift. One theory is that the drift will be the risk-free rate eroded by volatility. The risk-free rate is the rate that one can get on a fixed income, risk-free asset, such as a government bond. This theory is supported by the no riskless arbitrage argument. For more on this, see my video on the no riskless arbitrage argument. The other main theory is that the expected daily rate of change or drift should be zero. This is supported by the random walk theory. The asset's drift is the expected rate of change for price. However, it is probably not the rate price will actually change each day. It is simply the rate that has the greatest odds of occurring. The rate price will actually change is an unknown random number. We cannot determine what rate price will change each day, but what we can do is determine the odds of what the rate will be using the expected rate or value, in other words the drift, and the historical volatility, also known as the standard deviation. Because each day the asset can increase or decrease at any random rate, the central limit theorem in statistics tells us that we can assume that the periodic daily rates of return will be normally distributed. In other words, if we make a graph of the periodic daily returns, and we graph enough of the periodic daily returns, we can assume that the graph will form a normal distribution or bell-shaped graph. In reality though, we know this assumption is not technically true, but it is close enough for modeling purposes. So let's break that down. Today's stock price equals yesterday's stock price times E raised to R. The R value is a periodic rate of change or return. Because the stock can go up or down any percentage each day, in other words, the R can be any amount, the central limit theorem tells us that if we graph enough of these R values, the graph will form a normal distribution bell-shaped graph. This means that we can assume that the rates of the daily change in price in the future will also be normally distributed. In other words, 
the graph of possible future periodic daily rates of return will be a normal distribution curve using a historical standard deviation and using the drift as the mean. Again, we know this is not technically true, but it is close enough for modeling purposes. And that's Brownian motion applied to an asset. The drift, which is the historical average of the periodic daily returns eroded by volatility at the rate of half the variance over time. But that drift has a random part that combines with the drift to give an actual rate of return that is normally distributed. In short, Brownian motion means that if we graph the future periodic daily returns, we assume that the graph will form a normal distribution bell-shaped curve using the drift as the mean and using the historical standard deviation as the future standard deviation. The area under a normal distribution curve represents the total probability of an event occurring. Half of the curve is below the mean or expected value, so there's a 50% chance that a future data point will be below the expected value and a 50% chance that a future data point will be above the expected value. If you watched my videos on the standard deviation or are already familiar with it, then you may remember that a normal distribution curve follows the empirical rule. The area under the curve between one standard deviation below the mean and one standard deviation above the mean contains about 68% of the data. In the past, about 68% of the periodic daily returns were within one standard deviation of the average of all the periodic daily returns. So we can assume that on a daily basis, about 68% of the time in the future, the rate of change each day will be within one standard deviation of the expected future rate of change. In the past, about 95% of the periodic daily returns were within two standard deviations of the mean of all the periodic daily returns. So we can assume that on a daily basis, about 95% of the time in the future, the rate of change each day will be within two standard deviations of the expected future rate of change. To create a Monte Carlo simulator, we perform the following steps. We download the daily closing prices of an asset. We find the periodic daily returns for that asset. We find the mean variance and standard deviation for that asset. We create the formula of a drift plus a random stochastic offset. For the drift, we use the historical mean minus half the variance over time or we use the risk-free rate minus half the variance over time, or we just use zero. For the random part, we use random percentages of the area under the curve that combine with the drift to produce theoretical future daily returns that are normally distributed around the drift. To do this, we combine two Excel functions. The norm SINV function takes a percentage of the area under a curve and finds the number of standard deviations that spot is away from the mean. This is known as the z-score. For instance, norm SINV.95 will show that the area up to 1.645 standard deviations away from the mean will contain 95% of all the area under the curve. And norm S inverse.90 will show that 1.282 standard deviations away from the mean will contain 90% of the area under the curve. The RAND function produces a random number between 0 and 1. One can use this function to generate random percentages between 0 and 100 displayed in decimal form. When combined with the norm s inverse function, the RAND produces random percentages between 0 and 1. And the norm s inv function converts those random percentages to random standard deviations away from the mean. In other words, random z-scores. When we combine the random part of the formula with the drift, our formula produces theoretical returns that are normally distributed around the mean or expected value. Let's create a Monte Carlo simulator. The first step is to download the closing prices of an asset and find the periodic daily returns. We can download the closing prices of a stock or ETF at Yahoo Finance. Go to Yahoo Finance and enter the ticker symbol of a stock or ETF. For this example, I'm using GLD, the gold ETF. Click on Historical Prices on the left-hand column. When the page loads, enter the appropriate dates to cover the range that is needed. Common selections are one year or the entire life of the asset. Make sure that the option for daily is selected and then click on Get Prices. When the page loads, scroll down to the bottom and click on Download the Spreadsheet. Save the file and open in Excel or Google Docs. When the file opens, delete all but the date and the adjusted closing price for each day. In the cell to the right of the first closing price, type in equals ln, open parentheses, click on the cell containing the closing price for that day, 
add a slash for a divide, click on the previous day's adjusted closing price, add a close parenthesis, and press enter. This gives a periodic daily return for that day. Now click on the lower right hand corner of the cell and drag down to get the periodic daily returns for all the previous days as well. We need to find the average, variance, and standard deviation of the periodic daily returns. For the average, in any empty cell type in equals, average, open parentheses, click on the top of the column of the periodic daily returns, add a close parentheses, and hit enter. For the variance, in any empty cell type in equals, var.p, open parentheses, click on the top of the column of periodic daily returns, add a close parentheses, and hit enter. For the standard deviation, in any empty cell type in equals, stdev.p, open parentheses, click on the top of the column of periodic daily returns, add a close parentheses, and hit enter. Now let's create the formula. The formula has two parts, a constant drift and a random offset. For the drift, we want the average minus half of the variance. In any empty cell, type in equals, click on the cell containing the average, add a minus sign, open parentheses, click on the cell containing the variance, add a slash for divide, add a 2, add a close parentheses, and hit enter. I have in this column the closing prices of GLD in reverse order, with the current day's closing price as the last entry. In the column below the last entry, enter the following formula. Equals, click on the cell right above containing the current closing price, times, exp for the exponential function, raised to the power of open parentheses, click on the drift and then hit F4 to lock the value in, so it doesn't change when we scroll down plus, click on the cell containing the standard deviation and press F4 to lock, times, norm SINV, open parentheses again, type in RAND, type in another open parentheses, then type in all the closing parentheses to complete the formula, and press enter. Yesterday's price, times E raised to a power that is normally distributed around the drift. Now click on the bottom right corner of the cell and drag down to generate one set of possible future prices. Press the F9 key to change the random number that the RAND function produces. This recalculates out the formula with a new z-score, creating a new set of possible future prices. On the graph, you can see that each time that I press F9, the historical data remains constant but the theoretical future data changes to a new possible path. So that's understanding and creating a Monte Carlo simulation step by step. The concepts taught in this video are the basic concepts found in quantitative finance including the pricing of derivatives such as options, risk management, and portfolio hedging. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.